what's up everybody once again it's brand man sean and this video is brought to you by brandmannetwork.com because i signed myself now we got to talk about my guy chance the rapper i mean he's had pretty much of a fairy tale career so far from a public perspective but for the first time after a big day he's starting to struggle a little bit and let's talk about that struggle what has gone wrong or what has changed or created the impact that's happening right now I got three reasons that I've been observing after looking at everybody's feedback. So let's start with Big Day, right? I'm not going to go too deep into Big Day because a lot of people have talked about it, but let's just start with how people feel about it. The perfect example of that is the fact that Anthony Fantano gave it a zero, a zero out of 10. And a lot of people have been reflecting that in their own way. So there's that. You can find plenty of people saying that. I want to talk about some other stuff. So let's go back to Acid Rap. As a rap is pretty much endeared as his most classic album, his best album. And the subject matter was two primary things or two things that really brought an impact on that project. Right. You had this drug induced perspective, this young kid coming to age and just bringing in all these great ideas. But then also having this unique, absurd style. And that was pretty much when it really came together. Right. Ten day. He was still developing, but that unique, absurd style really went along with the idea of a kid being on acid. I think those two things together at the same time, and then all the quirkiness that is chance came together on acid rap. And it was just a perfect reflection of that. But then after acid rap, you had a disconnect, right? And what was that disconnect? Coloring book. This is when it started. So I'm going to read some of these hate comments that went along with it or people's overall confusion as a whole. So I'm completely aware that a lot of people love Coloring Book. It was his most critically acclaimed album, right, from the public perspective and the Grammy and all that great stuff. However, there was a cover-up that was happening at the same time, which I'll get to in a second. But first, let's talk about the people who didn't like Coloring Book, right? You had a lot of people that really didn't understand or care for the religious content. The production style was different as well. They didn't want to hear about God. They didn't want to hear about you coming to Jesus and all that good stuff. People didn't want that from Chance. They wanted acid rap Chance. And again, a lot of people did like Coloring Book and everybody was not even turned off by the fact he had that religious content in there. As a matter of fact, here's a comment that said, I'm an atheist, but I still like Coloring Book because it's a good album and it got positive vibes. But... Even that, right, for someone have to say but and consider your project, it still is something that you don't want your fans having to do. You don't want your fans to have to give you a pass. And this brings me to a part of the cover up. All right. There are a few things that allowed this happening with coloring book to actually be ignored or just, you know, pushed to the side. Chance the Rapper was having this rise and doing things that people had never seen and independent artists doing before so a lot of that narrative and attention was focused on that and you know even people who were fans from acid rap they were focused and excited about him just coming up to that level so if they didn't like coloring book it was still just this idea of seeing this person you like rise to the top and then at the same time his visibility was growing so quickly he had a new fan base a lot of these fans that were coming in kind of from coloring book first or just hearing about them and ask the rap in general or some of these features all at the same time so when you have a whole bunch of new fans coming in your fan retention isn't really paid attention to as much in that time so you might be losing three or four fans but if you're gaining 10 or 20 fans for every three or four you lose at the moment or every three and four who are like you know disc content with what's going on at the moment is not going to be registered at that moment because you're just growing so fast at the time and then last but not least even the people who aren't a huge fan of the content can't really say that it's just horrible music as a whole well people can say that but generally speaking that music was still regarded as quality music now that brings us back to big day though pretty much nobody is seeing that as good content or good music. It's just not what the public is saying. There's video after video, meme after meme, complaining about not only the music in general that's just not sounding good or seeming a little messy, but also just the idea that, yo, I don't want to hear about your wife all day, right? 
And there's nothing wrong with obviously making music about your wife, but this actually brings me to point number two. And I'd argue this is one of Chance the Rapper's deepest reasons for a disconnect. And that's the fact that his fans are confused, right? This guy who's on 10 day to acid rap, that it's, there's a little consistency there, right? That's the same guy, just a little bit older when you really think about it. And it's kind of, you know, still on maybe a possible rebellious spirit or free spirit. This guy was suspended. This guy's on drugs. Not really too difficult to add that up. But then all of a sudden you have this other guy who's having this come to Jesus moment or this moment where things are becoming so divine. His life is changing and doing a 360 from openly talking about drugs to openly talking about Christ and family and and all of these things. And those are two completely different sides of the fence. I know some people might say, well, he's a positive rapper and he's always been consistent with his positivity. But I wouldn't say positivity was his brand around the acid rap time. Right. I mean, it was just, you know, his great music. That was all it was. It wasn't more so, hey, I'm this big positive guy. And even when you're being positive, it seems like people are getting positivity fatigue. Right. Positivity for the sake of positivity is a little bit too much for people at times. You do have other positive rappers like Logic, J. Cole, Lil B, Lecrae, Lupe Fiasco, but they're all different types of positive. What does that mean in the first place? But each of them have some kind of interesting edge, something different about them. Chance the Rapper right now has just been seeming positive for the sake of positive. People don't really see any yin to the yang or yang to the yin. And this leads back to that fan confusion and branding. It's called a brand promise. What are you promising to your fans? What is the consistent thing and voice and energy and perspective you're giving people? And thirdly, which ties right into this is the journey that he's been on has potentially left his fans behind. And it just doesn't connect. And I know a lot of people think they have the capacity to still acknowledge the music and love it and and all that good good stuff, even if it's about subject matters that they're that aren't necessarily going on in their life. But at the end of the day, it still does connect differently. And you don't want to have to keep giving your favorite artist a pass like, oh, man, yeah. You know, that's good music. I don't really connect to that one. It doesn't move me so much, but I still think this is dope music. You don't want to have to do that again and again and again. And Chance's journey probably doesn't reflect a lot of his fans' journey at this point, especially when you connect it with many of them around an album called Acid Rap. And then the life that you're doing is 360. So essentially, in some ways, he might have started over with some fans at Coloring Book. Because at the end of the day, when you don't connect with the artist content wise like that, it's no different than when an artist gets rich and he's referencing all this super rich stuff and all these scenarios that you aren't completely aware of. Or you know what that car is, but you don't know what it's like driving in that car or some of these things that he's alluding to. So it's hard to fully understand, even if it's a great analogy, even if it's a great depiction, you don't understand the, the depth of what they're saying or you don't connect with it the same as when someone's talking about something that is along with your lifestyle like for me when he talks about his wife and all that kind of stuff especially when he talks about it in a way of you know this is my wife and all these great things that marriage has done for me i have not experienced that yet so yeah i get that it's some intellectual theoretical thing that could happen and a lot of people say that kind of thing and they say that how children change your life and all that kind of stuff however not being in a place where i experienced that to the extent that he's talking about really just sounds like somebody telling me about how great their life is and maybe even like an old head telling me you'll get it one day and we all know that when that old head tells you that you'll get it one day it doesn't really connect and then maybe one day when you get it all of a sudden it's like oh snap so maybe maybe big day will have that impact on some people I'm probably going to say not on a lot of people, but maybe it will. But for now, the disconnect is pretty deep. Again, my three reasons that I've observed is just the music. Obviously, it's just it's it, the music is what it is. And there's a big problem there for big day. But then also just this brand promise of the fans having to be confused. Like, what is going on? Who are you? You keep changing so much and reflecting these lifestyles. That part can be confusing for some people. And just there's a disconnect there. We lead to number three, that whole journey. You're leaving certain fans behind. 
I also have a bonus, which is more particular to Big Day specifically. And that's the fact that he had the greatest album of all time as one of his concepts for album. And that's just so, so weird, like album. Come on, Chance. Album, though? And he said it himself that when he was thinking of that concept, you're thinking about all the different types of songs that are on the greatest album of all time. And whenever artists start thinking like that, a lot of times it ends up in something messy because it's not a cohesive concept that actually means anything. It's kind of a superficial concept to have. It doesn't lend towards content too heavily. But those are just my thoughts on things I've observed so far. I would love to know you guys' thoughts on this subject. And as always, this video is brought to you by brandmannetwork.com because I signed myself. Any artists out there who need any brand development, marketing, advice, and mentorship, you can check out this out. But if you like this video, go ahead and like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.